So you're starting a ketogenic diet, or maybe you've been on a ketogenic diet, and you're just hearing constantly that any weight that you lose on the keto diet is gonna come right back. You probably have people telling you, naysayers telling you all the time, that whenever you lose weight in any kind of fast way, it comes right back. Well, let's give them some credit. Honestly, that used to be the case. Whenever you would lose weight in a really fast way, you'd have to be cautious. It'd be pretty easy to regain it. But with the ketogenic diet, there's some recent studies and there's some pretty awesome research that shows that you don't gain weight back quite as fast. And you have some pretty awesome changes that happen with your metabolism that work in your favor. So let's break down all the science and break down what's happening between water weight, long-term fat loss, and your resting metabolic rate so that you can comfortably enjoy the ketogenic diet without thinking that you're gonna gain all your fat back. You're watching the internet's leading nutrition and performance channel. We got new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos coming out throughout the course of the week, including live broadcasts. So make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and make sure you subscribe. Also, check out highly.com so you can check out the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, first things first, let's talk about the water weight side of things for a second, because I think that's the first thing that people will tell you. You start a keto diet, you lose a bunch of fat, and people come up to you and they say, ah, it's just water weight, it's the keto diet, it's a crash diet, it's a fad diet, you're just losing water weight. Well, here's what happens. They are correct to a very small degree. The first few pounds that you lose on a ketogenic diet, yes, those are water pounds, but that's okay. You see, what's happening is you hold glycogen in your muscles. Glycogen is the stored form of carbohydrates. So all the years that you've been eating carbohydrates, it's been going into your muscles and stored in the form of glycogen. Then what happens is the moment you stop eating carbohydrates, your body starts burning through that glycogen. Well, guess what? That glycogen holds water. One gram of glycogen, one gram of stored carbohydrate, holds approximately three to four grams of water, which means the moment you start losing those carbohydrates, you lose the water that goes along with it. But that stops as soon as those carbohydrates are out of the system. So when you first start a keto diet, a lot of times you will lose four to five pounds really quick. Yes, that first four to five pounds is water weight. But after that, I assure you, it's fat that you're losing. You see, if you were to regain that water weight, it would regain really quick and it would only regain in the amount that you already lost. So for example, if you lost four pounds of water weight when you first started the keto diet, if you started eating carbs again, you're not gonna balloon up 20 pounds, you're only gonna blow up the next four pounds that you already lost. It's really no big deal. It's all water and it's all controllable. So let's talk about what's actually happening when it comes down to the long-term fat loss, because that's what we're really interested in. Is the fat that you're losing, even when you lose it swiftly, truly gone for good? Well, let's take a look at one major meta-analysis to start things off. Because this study was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. It was a meta-analysis that took a look at 13 studies comparing the results of the very low-carb ketogenic diet versus a low-fat diet. Now, what they wanted to look at in this study was quite simple. They wanted to do a meta-analysis to see which diet actually elicited more of a fat loss response. Well, eight of the 13 studies ended up showing no difference between the two. Okay? They both lost weight but five of the studies showed significant differences with the ketogenic diet in our favor, showing that of those 13 studies, five of those studies ended up having crazy good results with the ketogenic diet as it comes down to fat loss. And this is long-term as well. Okay, so we know right out the gate that compared to other diets, the ketogenic diet tends to be a little bit better in terms of fat loss. But that doesn't necessarily answer the question of will I gain that weight back? Well, in order to answer this question, we have to look at something known as the resting metabolic rate. Now, you might know what the resting metabolic rate is, but to give you a brief synopsis of it, all that it is is your basal metabolic rate. Some people are born with a little bit of a faster metabolism than others. Some people work really hard to get their metabolism up. Maybe they have more muscle. Maybe they're very, very active. But the resting metabolic rate is simply your body's energy balance. So your ability to burn energy at rest. How much energy do you burn just being you? Well, it amounts for 75% of the overall calories that you burn in a day. So yeah, it makes a huge, huge difference. So someone that has a higher resting metabolic rate is gonna burn fat a little bit easier. It's gonna be easier for them to be in that right kind of energy balance that they need to burn fat. Someone that has a slow resting metabolic rate is going to have a harder time losing weight because it's easier for them to be in that positive energy balance where they end up gaining weight easier. So what we have to look at with diets in general is that when you crash diet or you lose a lot of weight very fast, your resting metabolic rate drops. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're 250 pounds. Let's say you're moderately overweight and you start a diet. 
and you drop your weight down to 200 pounds very, very fast, so you lose 50 pounds. Well, what's going to happen is your metabolism is going to drop along with that just to accommodate. It's just an adaptation. What happens is your body is somewhat used to being at 250 pounds, but you have the metabolism of a 200 pound person. So when you start eating, your energy difference is quite big. Your energy imbalance is way out of whack, making it very easier for you to rebound. But again, this is only happening because your resting metabolic rate is decreasing. What if I told you that the ketogenic diet actually doesn't affect your resting metabolic rate? Yeah, literally, like you can lose weight, lose fat, but not slow down your metabolism. See, let's take a look at a very recent study that was published just in February of 2018. This study was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism. It took a look at 20 obese patients. And these 20 obese patients, they had them go on a very low carb ketogenic diet with a very low calorie diet as well. So they had them eat between six and 800 calories per day. That's definitely by definition quite a crash diet, losing weight fast. But again, they had them do this in the absence of carbohydrates on a ketogenic protocol. So they had them lose 45 pounds over four months. That's a lot of weight to lose in a very short amount of time. By most standards, most people would tell you that's a crash diet, okay? And for all intents and purposes, it kind of is. So 45 pounds in four months. Well, guess what? At the end of those four months, they found that all 20 subjects had no change in their resting metabolic rate or very, very little to some degree. So what this showed was that they could lose weight rapidly and keep it off. So they could lose 45 pounds, but their metabolism would stay elevated as if they still weighed the same as they did with those 45 pounds still on them. That is huge. That actually improves the energy balance that you need to lose even more weight. But why the heck does this occur? Well, it has to do with the muscle preservation that the ketogenic diet provides the person. You see, ketones exert a restraining force upon protein breakdown. So what that means is that since the body has the ability to use ketones or fats for fuel, it doesn't have to go and find protein. Normally, whenever you reduce your calories, your body's gonna start finding protein from your muscle tissue and break it down for energy. It's just par for the course. But with the keto diet, you're giving yourself ketones and fat so your body doesn't have to do that. This preserves your muscle. This is very, very powerful. And there was a study that was published in the journal Clinical Investigation that found that beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone body, actually decreased leucine oxidation by up to 41%. What does that mean? Well, leucine is the main amino acid that would get oxidized if you are breaking down muscle. So when you decrease leucine oxidation by 41% or up to 41%, you are almost decreasing the protein breakdown by half. That's remarkable. So that shows right then and there why you preserve muscle. Now you may be thinking, I'm not a heavily muscled person. I'm just you know, going through life. I'm just a regular person. That doesn't matter. Your muscle mass, what muscle mass you do have, whether you work out or not, is a huge contributing factor to your overall weight loss. So you want to keep that muscle on regardless. So use this video as ammo. Use it as proof to show your friends and family that the ketogenic diet is not just some crash diet, some fad diet thing. It's here to stay, and it has profound effects on your weight loss, but also profound effects on keeping that weight off and preserving your metabolism so that you can continue to be the person that you are without ever having to change a thing other than the carbohydrates that are coming into your body. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here in my videos. Remember, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Leave your comments down below, and I'll check them out for ideas for future videos. See you soon.